Remember when you used to play Pac-Man like that? Well now, you can play it with that. Today on the Man Cave, we're investigating the arcade one-up Pac-Man giant joystick featuring 10 games and this gigantic novelty wireless controller. So the question is, is it fun playing Pac-Man on that thing? Is it fun playing any of those 10 games with the Pac-Man giant wireless controller? Well, the short answer is, nah, it's got some problems. And the long answer is this video. So the Pac-Man giant joystick ships with this and uh, you have to put two uh, AA batteries on the inside. It's just a, just a little Phillips screwdriver. You take that off, pop them in and you turn the system on like this. And it comes with a micro, uh, uh, well, it comes with a mini USB that has to be plugged into a cube and an HDMI cable. And then that should, uh, and you've got a little, this is the box where all the magic happens. Press the button. That comes on because it's hooked up to the cube, just like your iPhone adapter, etc. And then we're going to have the arcade one up showing up here anytime. There we go. So once you get there, you've got your selection of 10 games. It'll be kicking in just a second. And those 10 games, of course, Pac Man, uh, Pac Mania, Dig Dug, Mappy, New Rally X, Galaga. Rolling Thunder, Galaga 88, Z, uh, Super Zevius, and Dragon Spirit. And uh, for those arcade one-up aficionados, you'll know that, uh, geez, we get Rolling Thunder and Dragon Spirit on this thing. Games you've never seen before on any arcade one-up cabinets. Um, so, pretty exciting. But how does it work? So, what you have to do is you've got to move Pac-Man's head to move around and pick your game. So, of course, this is Pac-Man. Let's check out Pac-Man. So once you want to start a game, you have to go down to the pad and you have to press the A button. And that's going to take you to that screen. And then you have to press the A button again. And then it's going to take you into the game where you get to go to the coin button on the front and press your coin button. And then you're ready to go. Let's have a look. So ultimately, I mean, yeah, it is playable. Uh, for an adult, for a small child, I can see them giving up pretty quick, uh, especially if they don't know the game very well. But it, you can play it, and so far it seems to be okay. It's not the best way. I mean, obviously this is a novelty item. You're not going to see this on G4 with Billy Mitchell standing behind it. You know, if you had some people over and you're having some fun and drinking a little bit, this might be an interesting way to see who can do the best being a little bit handicapped in terms of control. So this is, this is passable. Pac-Man is passable. And I'll leave it at that. Already my hand is cramping up on the back of Pac-Man's skull here. And honestly, only recommended, like Pac-Man, to be playing if you're having some drinks. You know, sometimes you want things a little more challenging. This definitely makes it more challenging, but I wouldn't say it makes it more fun. But unless you have to be the right kind of guys, I guess. Having the two buttons spread so far apart, I'm not sure what the best way to play this game is. Or if it should be played this way ever. Playing a game like Dig Dug requires some precision, even though you're up, down, left, and right. These things can close in on you pretty fast. And unfortunately, this joystick just doesn't have the precise movements you need to be successful at this game. Surprisingly, I actually don't mind playing New Rally X with this thing. It actually seems to be pretty good, and I played it just as well with this novelty stick as I have with, a, with an arcade controller. Playing a vertical shooter like Dragon Spirit, you've got uh, you know you've got a lot of things coming at you. You need a lot of precision. You're up and down. You're left and right. You've got your fire button. You've got your bomb button, and um, and that's kind of hard to get going. Anything with two buttons that you really have to use all the time is uh, is pretty difficult on this thing. Galaga 88 is a is a far uh, far faster paced shooter than Galaga. 
and with the precision required and all the things dropping and coming at you, no one's going to get very far in this. Uh, even seasoned vets are going to have some trouble with this and probably won't come back too many times. Pac-Mania adds a jump button, of course, over the original Pac-Man. And this is actually playable. It's not too bad. You could probably uh, have a little bit of fun with this. Again, competing to see who could get the furthest uh, playing with this uh, joystick. But actually, not too bad. Because Mappy requires precision movements, especially jumps on the trampoline to the, like, the second level, third level, those can be pretty difficult. You have to press up on Pac-Man's head to make those jumps, and then slam over to the left or right. So i got to give this one a pass. Playing a game like Super Xevious requires precision, much like Dragon Spirit, and there's just too many things going on, and the precision required isn't happening. I'm not sure how many drinks it would take for this to be entertaining and fun, but I know I've, I've never drank that much. The Pac-Man Giant Joystick uh, accepts USB controllers for much better control. So you just plug a USB controller, this is an Xbox 360 USB wired controller, into the front of it. Um, I do find it odd that um, the analog or D-pad doesn't work. You actually have to still use Pac-Man to select your game. So let's go to that. Let's go to Rolling Thunder for a minute. And then you have to press, uh, from what I learned, just the right bumper. And that'll take you there. That kind of acts like A. And then you're in. And I think you have to press the left, left bumper to add a coin. And you're good to go. The D-pad doesn't work. But the, um, the A and B buttons, A is shoot, and B is jump, and this is far better, obviously. Much easier to, continue, uh, to control than the giant joystick. However, you, know, you don't want to be spending $150, $120 on 10 games just to plug a, a controller in and use that. But if you did already buy this, this is certainly a solution for making this whole thing far more enjoyable and entertaining is hooking up a USB uh, joystick. The base also allows you to plug in a micro SD card. I've inserted one, I'll just press it in. And you should be able to access uh, this once you, uh, once you attach it and plug it in. So let's go and have a look. With the SD card inserted in the back, turn power on the system. It'll bypass this, and now you've got local storage, which will give you your, your Pac-Man games, the 10 games, or you can switch over to the micro SD card and access games, I'm assuming, on the micro SD card. Uh, I have nothing loaded on here at the moment, so if uh, you press this, it just goes to a blue screen. But I'm going to investigate this a little further, and um, I'm sure there's obviously a way to get, uh, to get more games on this particular system for you. So, in conclusion, Your Honor, I cannot in good faith recommend the A 1UP Giant Pac-Man joystick for these two reasons. Price and lack of precise control. If the price of this was under 50 bucks, it would make for a fun, albeit challenging, night of gaming with your drunken pals, as I said, the operative word being drunken. If it looked like the original concept that was shown at CES last year, I mean, that was awesome. At that price, it would be a welcome accoutrement, pardon my French, to any home arcade, but it doesn't. It looks like this. The lack of precision control is honestly, you know, to be expected, but the inclusion of the two buttons and the two button games such as Rolling Thunder, Dragon Spirit, and Super Xevious are questionable given that they're so hard to play comfortably. The ability to add a USB controller is welcome, but then why not just, you know, buy the Namco flashback for under 20 bucks and get a, like five of these games, right? And just play the games that way. And when it comes down to it, kids are not going to be enthralled with this, and man, adults are going to get, uh, they'll get bored of this novelty pretty quickly. And I'm all for companies trying new things, but sometimes, hey, they just don't land. Hey, but good on A1UP for trying something different. I mean, hey, Nintendo made a killing on peripherals, and even systems that went nowhere. Power Glove, Nintendo's, Nintendo Super Scope, Game Boy Printer, DK Bongos, Virtual Boy, Wii U, and the list goes on and on. But people don't freak out on them. They're like, oh, that Nintendo, right? So, yeah, ultimately, you should pass on this one. And most likely, the Mickey Mouse and the Atari versions of this, too. But hey, that Atari joystick would sure look great in the man cave. Till next time.
I'm Moxie. Subscribe, like, comment. Catch you later.